Intraocular foreign body management, venturing into the known and the unknown. Introduction Emergency surgery is necessary. Risk of endophthalmitis is highest of all injury types and the incidence varies from 2 to 38%. High chance of endophthalmitis is there if the foreign body is not removed. Also, there is a risk of soil contamination. Explaining visual prognosis is difficult and becomes more difficult if the presenting best corrected visual acuity is very good. This one is a 35 year old male who presented to us with a history of injury to the right eye while hammering with associated cataract as can be seen and an intraocular foreign body. The ultrasound B scan and X-ray were suggestive of intraocular foreign body in the, in the nasal quadrant and was measured about 4 mm in size. Patient was taken up for 23 gauge vitrectomy for cataract removal and intraocular foreign body removal. Presenting visual acuity was 6.9 and the intraocular pressure was 12 mm of mercury. The lens matter was removed after having completed the lensectomy and the anterior capsule was remained was retained as much as possible. Thereafter, posterior vitreous detachment was induced, assisted with triamcinolone acetonide, and the intraocular foreign body was localized in superior nasal quadrant, as had already been suggested in previous X ray and B scan. I used a 23 gauge intraocular foreign body removal forceps to manipulate it out into the interior chamber foreign body and using the handshake technique was manipulated out of the eye successfully. The capsule was retained and this is the post-operative picture 6 months post-op which patient regains visual acuity of 6-9. Case 2 the unknown where there were a lot of variables and this was a 65 year old male who had already been subjected to vitrectomy and partial lens removal elsewhere and was referred to us for further management as the intraocular foreign body could not be removed. Presenting visual acuity was 6-9 with retained intraocular foreign body, repaired corneal tear, aphakia, vitreous hemorrhage, drop lens matter, retained intraocular foreign body and a measure intraocular foreign body measuring 3 mm in size. B scan also did not pick up the retained intraocular foreign body. CT scan of the orbit did show the intraocular foreign body on axial and sagittal views as well as a 3D rendering of the CT scan. So the patient was taken up for repeat vitrectomy for intraocular foreign body removal under guard visual prognosis. B scan, which was done preoperatively, is not showing intraocular foreign body. The CT scans on the axial and sagittal section and the 3D rendering show it showed the intraocular foreign body. So the patient was taken off for vitrectomy. The video shows the, man, the preoperative physician uh, cat, uh, status of the uh, eye. So vitrectomy was initiated slowly. And the dense Clotted vitreous hemorrhage was removed carefully, knowing that there is still an intraocular foreign body somewhere there. The remaining lens matter between the anterior posterior capsule was removed and the lens matter also was removed. Soft tip was used to gently ease out the blood from the vitreous cavity. Not being sure of where the intraocular foreign body lies 
was the riddle to be solved. The remaining again, the lens matter and the dense clotted heme was removed slowly and steadily. The vacuum was at varied from 350 to 400. The IOP infusion was at 25 millimeters of mercury. Cut rate varied from 3000 to 3500. After having cleared the vitreous hemorrhage slowly and steadily, also having screened the periphery with indentation, I found out that there was a highly reflectile object lying inferior mm, temporarily and looked like that there is something there which is suspicious. So indentation helped me and therefore I identified that to be the intraocular foreign body. Gradually, whatever heme was there in a dense encapsulated foreign body was localized. Once the foreign body fell down onto the posterior pole, the encapsulated foreign body was then removed using the intraocular foreign body forceps slowly and gradually out of the vitreous cavity. While removing the foreign body, I could see that this, it is an encapsulated one. And using the handshake technique, Also, using the iris plane to push the interior, the foreign body into the iris plane and then taking it out from the corneal tunnel was so that it does not fall down into the and this 4.5 millimeter intraocular foreign body was successfully removed, which had not been removed earlier. The patient regained. 6-9 visual acuity in the post-operative period. These are some of the images as the vitrectomy had been completed. We also screened the periphery once again to look for any peripheral tears or hole that had formed during the course of the foreign body, the foreign body removal and I did a 360 degree laser barrage so as to ensure that there is because there's already been manipulation twice uh, to create a new aura and silicon oil was injected <laughs> removed and IOL was implanted. Ultimately, the patient gained 6-9 visual acuity and was happy with the visual acuity outcomes. Thank you.